What is up you guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so, so excited for this video because today I'm going to be giving you all of my tips, tricks, and life hacks for studying abroad, specifically in Madrid. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much to everyone who's been so kind about my YouTube channel, my videos. It means the world to me. And without further ado, let's just get right into it. So just a quick little background on me. I studied abroad at SLU Madrid last spring semester in 2019 and I had a complete blast. I took 13 credit hours. One of them was an honors course. That was one credit hour. And then my other classes I took were social psychology, business law, ethics, and Old Testament. First off, let's start with classes. I know from a lot of people that normally the school, at least to me, was more manageable since I was taking less credits, but that didn't mean I didn't have to study. So one of my biggest tips, please don't let your study abroad experience be the time where you let your grades slip. I know a couple people who had done that and they definitely regret it looking back, especially since they easily could have gotten high marks. Always remember that you are studying abroad. Whether you have class Monday to Friday or Monday to Thursday, definitely make those four or five days your time to focus on school and trying to get all of your homework done before you go on a weekend trip. That way you're not stressed out. Yes, you're gonna be traveling and you're gonna have to study, but some of my tips are buy your books online. So I used Amazon and I got the Kindle eBooks, which was great because I could have my books downloaded onto my computer on the Amazon Kindle app. And then I could also have it on my phone on the Amazon Kindle app, which meant that I could read my textbooks anywhere without Wi-Fi, And then I didn't have to carry around my books. That just saved extra space. I would also recommend downloading and paying for Quizlet Go. That way I could look at my flashcard sets without Wi-Fi. All of my study material was on my phone. I could easily study just in my free time whenever I was traveling. So as far as what to wear to maybe your first day of class or just to school, people do dress up nice. So I would highly recommend wearing, you know, a pair of jeans, a nice sweater, a good jacket, don't wear leggings, don't wear tennis shoes. So as far as places to go to study, like study cafes in Madrid, I would recommend 1000 Cups. La Bicicleta, Cafe Federal, and then Favorite was another one. I went to a lot of Starbucks and did not get Wi-Fi there. Even though I was connected, the Wi-Fi just, it never got to the internet. Starbucks probably isn't gonna be the best place. If you are looking for places to study and are kind of struggling, I actually got a library card. My host dad recommended it to me. So you can study in the library without a library card, just the card gave you the Wi-Fi to the building. They're really cute guys who studied at this library. That's why I studied there so much. <laughs> because the Spanish guys were A1. So as far as hip pocketing and guarding your stuff, I know it's super common to just put your phone like in your front pocket or your back pocket in the US. Do not, do not, do not do that. You will get your phone stolen. Don't ever set your phone down on the table next to you where you're eating. I know one girl in my apartment got her phone stolen that way. Always, always, always have my phone in my hand. I never got it stolen. I never got pit pocketed. Nothing of mine ever got taken. And I think it really comes down to you just have to be hyper aware of your surroundings more than you think. Don't ever get comfortable because the second you get comfortable with your stuff is the second that someone's gonna take it. And as far as backpacks, I had two locks on my bag. I had one lock on the big strap where my computer was, and I had another lock on the pocket where my wallet and my, my phone or whatever else I had of value would be. That way when I was on the Metro, I could be around a lot of people and know that my most valuable things were locked up. They couldn't get in my bag. Also be cognizant. One of my friends had her backpack stolen at school. So never leave your backpack unattended. Okay, I'm gonna show you a little hack how I prevented my wallet from getting stolen in my bag. I had this passport bag with this strap like so. And what's awesome about this is I actually tied this to my purse. So I looped it to my purse like this, that way I could tuck my wallet into the bag, but it would be attached to the actual purse. That way if someone reached in my bag and tried to take my wallet out, it would like yank the whole bag. To me, it was an extra safety guard. I never had any issues with losing my things because of that. If you're going out and you're worried about pickpocketing, you're like, I don't know how to carry my stuff. I wanna bring my phone, I need my wallet. I brought a fanny pack like this. If you wear it in front of you like this, one, it's fashionable, so it's not like you're gonna look goofy. But two, all your belongings are right here on your chest. So 
it would be very odd if someone was like reaching for like your chest to get into your bag. What's great about these is that normally they have a pocket in the back like this. So I put my wallet, my valuables all in the back here. That way it was closest to my body. I felt very secure with it. So a student ID is not gonna work if you go out. They're gonna card you regardless. I had my driver's license, never had an issue getting in. And I know having just like a picture, a scanned picture of your passport also wasn't enough at some places. I would not recommend bringing your passport out when you go out. It's so not safe. For going out, bring actual cash with you. It's a lot easier to pay entrance fees for drinks, for tips, whatever. It's easier to have cash to give them. That way you don't have to worry about losing your card. Also another reason why I say bring cash with you when you go out, if for whatever reason you can't get an Uber or you can't take the Metro home, you can always take a taxi and having that backup cash will allow you to get home safely. As far as what to wear, people do dress pretty nice to go out. Dress up nicer to go out in Madrid or anywhere in Europe than you would to say a frat party or an apartment party. And something to remember in Madrid, the metro closes at 2 a.m. and reopens at 6 a.m. If you are wanting to make it by the 2 a.m. time, definitely try to get to the metro earlier because the trains start closing out. I think the last train leaves the end point of the track at like 1.30 ish in the morning. So just be cognizant of where you're at along the metro line. And then also for going out, always have a guest list when you go. You still will get in fine, but if you're on the guest list, it's easier and normally you get a discount. So getting settled and kind of figuring out just some basic things, I'm gonna give you a rundown of some shopping areas, stores, etc., where you can kind of find the things that you're looking for. I bought my shampoo, my conditioner, all of those supplies you can buy in Madrid. They will have all of that there. If there's anything that you're super picky about, you really want to bring, just make sure you bring that. In Madrid, Primark is gonna be your best friend as far as shopping and just kind of random needs. So if you're ever needing anything, such as like bras, underwear, socks, a new bag, um, like little travel supplies, any of that, they had that there. Another store to keep in mind is care for it is basically a grocery store they have them on every corner that's where i got all of my snacks my little groceries for the week it's uber cheap another store is el corte inglés it's a giant department store kind of like a macy's mixed with a walmart so they have everything you could ever need now i'm going to talk about weekend trips the first week to two weeks everyone gets into this huge panic thinking they have to get everything booked right away you so don't please like don't do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, trips are not always the cheapest that early out. I got some awesome last minute deals. You're gonna meet really awesome people. You're gonna have amazing new friends. And if you book all of your trips in the beginning with either people you were friends with or people just in your apartment, you're not gonna be able to go on trips with the awesome new people you met. And then three, people are gonna be posting a lot of pictures. You're going to be seeing where other people go. Some people might go places that you never had on your radar, you never even considered going, and you don't wanna be already booked out thinking, crap, like I'm screwed, I can't go there now because I booked all these trips out. So planning weekend trips, some websites I recommend. Omeo is awesome for buses and train tickets. And then Skyscanner is an awesome website for booking actual flights. And then if you're looking for like hotel, flight combinations. I use the website Opido. And then as far as finding hostels, go to Hostel World. I thought they had some of the best prices. However, I would recommend Airbnb over hostels for a couple reasons. If you are splitting the price of an Airbnb with five of your friends, it's gonna be incredibly inexpensive and then you get an actual apartment to yourself. But if you're staying in a hostel, they're not the end of the world. I had awesome experiences in my hostels earplugs, buy these. I never slept alone when I was studying abroad and having these saved my life. I hate snores and I hate mouth breathers. And ever since I got earplugs, I have slept like a baby. And then another thing to think of if you are staying in hostels, try to buy a microfiber towel or a microfiber hair towel. These will allow you to just kind of use your own products. You don't have to use theirs. And then I know some hostels actually charge you to use their towels. So it's just another cost savings. For weekend trips, as far as packing, 
All you really need is a duffel bag or a backpack or a combination of the two. I brought pretty minimal clothes, stuff I could wear over and over again. And then I would also recommend bringing a bag of toiletry items like this. This I brought with me to Madrid just so I had a stock of some of my goodies beforehand. So when you're booking weekend trips, this is a hack that a lot of my friends used and it will save you money in the long run. Whatever browser you're on, if you're using Google Chrome, go into incognito mode. So what's great about this is that the website doesn't know that it's coming from you. It doesn't save your history. So airline companies can't jack up the prices because they know that you're looking for comparable flights. The first time you go on the metro to your school, write down literally every single thing you're doing. You know, I got off the metro, I turn right down this hallway, I go up the escalator, I turn left here, I walk out this exit. Do a little test run, that way you're not stressed out when you go to class on the first day. And then when you go to class on the first day, try to go with a friend or one of your roommates. If you're going from, let's say, your apartment to a cafe, school, wherever, put it in Google Maps or just the map app on your phone and then click the little subway option. It'll show you the exact route you have to take on the Metro and just screenshot that on your phone so you have the route. It tells you exactly how many stations you're gonna pass, which station to get out, which station to go to next. That is so crucial to have those directions before you go. If working out is really important to you, if it's something you want to maintain, I know a couple of my friends either bought gym passes or did classes, but if you want to buy a gym pass, I would suggest really considering how much you're gonna be using it and if you're gonna get the bang for your buck. So what I did was I just ran. I absolutely loved it. I felt very safe running especially as a female running alone, I never felt unsafe. I ran at night, I ran in the mornings, I ran in the afternoon. Also, brush up on your Spanish. Another awesome website. City Life Madrid has so many amazing resources. City Life Madrid really provides a lot of amazing opportunities for you to just get involved in Madrid. Don't spend all your time in your host family's apartment or the apartment that you're staying in. Please get out and explore the city. No matter what city you're in, you will regret it. You only have five months, maybe, where you're at, so don't waste it. Okay, that is the end of this video. I hope something was of value to you. There's only so much I can fill you guys in on. There's some things that you're just gonna have to learn when you're over there. It is a learning experience. It's a journey for a reason. I really hope you absolutely enjoy and love your study abroad experience in Madrid. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Help a girl out. I love you all. I wish you all the best and have fun. Bye friends. Bye.